today I'm going to talk about uh, sustainable agriculture. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, check uh, if we should uh, change to a more sustainable uh, community a lot. With the human population increasing and more and more people having access to new technology, we are changing the planet at a rocket speed never seen before in human history. In 2010, 46 billion tons of greenhouse gas was emitted. Sun bombards the Earth with the sunshine and brings us the energy we need. Some of the energy will be released to the space. Uh, when the process reaches a balance, the global temperature will stay stable. With huge amount of greenhouse gas emitted to the atmosphere year by year, enormous heat was trapped in the Earth and pushed the global temperature higher than before. Compared with pre-industrial times, the global average temperature has increased uh, 1.2 uh, Celsius degree. Sounds like a mild change. Global average temperature represents an average uh, over the entire, uh, planet, the, the surface, uh, entire surface of the planet. So it's different from the temperature fluctuation we experience every day. A two degree uh, drop in global average temperature can bring, uh, bring the Earth into little ice age. With five degree drop, many of you can see an iceberg at your backyard if you and your house are lucky to survive under that weather. So let's look at the water quality. About 85% of the river water in Shanghai was undrinkable. And about 56 of the, of the water in Shanghai was unfit for any purpose. About 40% of the river water in Beijing was so polluted that it was essentially functionless. And you know, China is not the worst in water pollution. Many countries are even worse than China. In 2007, the world used about 5.2 uh, billion pounds of weed killers, insecticides, and fungicides. And much of these chemicals ran off to the surface water or leached to the groundwater or evaporated into the air. And some of them enter our body through the food chain or air. As of 2015, uh, 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste had been generated. In 2014, the global per plastic production is about 311 million tons. An average person uses about 45 kilograms of plastic per year. Plastic is built to last. It breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. And some of them finally end up in our body through the food chain. The toxic chemicals leached out of the plastic and are found in the tissue and the blood of nearly all of us. So actually we are making more, uh, many more damages to the environment and to ourselves. I'm not an expert in pollution, and I don't need to be an expert to understand this. Just at Nanjing, in this winter, PM 2.5 often stays around 100, sometimes even exceeded 200. So is this the time for us to make change? Maybe yes, maybe no. This is a question very hard to answer. So let's check the history of a special species that maybe can give us a clue to this question. Last winter, I read a book named Being Mortar by Arthur Gavange, who is a practicing surgeon at the US and a professor at Harvard Medical School. He described the terrible situation of some cancer patients in this book. When I was preparing the presentation, those stories came to my mind. I was curious why these cancer cells always destroyed themselves along, along with the hosts they lived in. If you look closely at the behavior of each cancer cell, actually they are quite smart. They fight fearlessly with the immune system and compete for, uh, for nutrition with other cells. And usually they are winners in their ecosystem. I come across 
uh, there is a link uh, here that, uh, uh, to, to an article which explained in more detail about the uh, behavior of a cancer cell. You will be, if you are interested, you can read it. You will be shocked by their intelligence and teamwork. So why these smart winners kept on destroying themselves? After watching so many cancer, uh, cancer cell society destroyed by themselves, it's obvious for us observers to find the problem. Their ecosystem couldn't support their development, development model. But for every single cancer cell, it's almost impossible to find when and how the ecosystem will collapse. They had never seen it before. They just they lived like this generation by generation and keep growing and growing. And we're already reaching the verge of cliff. They lack a mechanism to pursue the big danger and adjust themselves. So let's get back to our question. Is this the time for us to change? My answer is, I don't know. By watching the history of a cancer, uh, cancer cell society, it's pretty sure that one thing is pretty sure. If we keep growing like this, very likely the ecosystem could collapse. We just don't know when and how. But it happens only once, and then game over. No chance to regret. To avoid the tragedy of a cancer cell society, as a precaution, I think we should pay attention to this issue. Watch out and change to a more sustainable lifestyle. Changing to a more sustainable community is like changing the route of an aircraft carrier. There's lots of work to do before it happens. Considering the pollution agriculture contributes to the environment, and sustainable agriculture is one of the cornerstones of a sustainable community. Permaculture is a highly sustainable farming practice. It's uh, different from industrial farms. It works with the nat natural rather than against the natural. Uh, sunshine, rain, soil, plants, animals, microorganisms, all these elements play an important role in crop growth. We observe the pattern, we observe the uh, interactions among these elements and find those patterns that benefit crops grow. And we mimic those patterns in our farm to create an environment that help crops grow healthily. Biodiversity is a cornerstone of permaculture. Besides crops, we plant many trees and herbs in the farm. Much space uh, was, uh, is left untouched wild. From uh, uh, wild flowers and herbs blossom from spring to early winter and uh, provide provided abundant food for insects, including beneficial insects. The com uh, complicated uh, interaction among these uh, sex help us suppressing the outburst of pests. So this served most of, the, most of our pest management work. We only need to pay attention to pest management, pe pest management in some special season for some special uh, vegetables. Some animals and crops are in nature companion, like duck and rice. After transplanting rice in the field, we will put a flock of ducks in the rice field. Ducks helps control weeds and pests. Hen weeding in rice field is one of the most horrible work in the, uh, in the, in, in the world. Rice grows in summer when everything grows crazily. So the bright sun bakes you from the overhead, and the hot water in, uh, in, in the field hits you from the bottom. The rice leaves break your face. So we, uh, without the help of ducks, we need to hand weeding the rice for twice or three times in summer. With the ducks, we only need to do it once or even zero if everything will manage it. A preferred microclimate can help crops grow. Last of all, we plant radishes at two different places. One was in urban field, another was surrounded by, the, by reeds. When the cold wind was rolling over the urban field, you can just feel a mild breeze in the area surrounded by the reeds. So the, these two radishes 
was sold at the same time. After a few months, these were what they look like. You see the left is the radish in the area surrounded by the reeds. The right is in the open field. So to make a farm permaculture, farmers need to spend a lot of time to, ob to observe the natural. The more time we spend in the, in, in, uh, in the field, the more chance we will find useful, pat useful patterns. That's where our improvement opportunity lies at. Clean air, clean water, fertile soil, less extreme weather, these are the foundations to support our lives. Today, many of the audience are parents. We love our children and want to give them the best. Do they deserve a better environment? Thanks. I, I hope we can make Nanjing a leading sustainable city. Thank you.